first of all, uh, my there is a correction that uh, I am not a professor at all. Uh, I had been uh, a lecturer in the University of Japna for a while. So, uh, professorship is uh, not an easy thing to be given. Uh, thank you, Dr. Soma Langovan, for introducing me. And uh, I'm sure that there's a time constraint and uh, you are not in a position to listen to such speeches. Uh, Mr. Kumarasan was delivering an offhand uh, speech yesterday. Even I thought of doing it, but uh, my brain is frozen at this time. Uh, so I always uh, prepare something to deliver, but I'm going to cut short, um, definitely. Because uh, the topic that is given to me is uh, humanism and social justice in Sri Lanka. And when I talk about this, uh, it's an emotional topic for me. Because Dr. Soma Langovan said we are all gathered here as Tamils. And uh, even in my case, I have come to Canada being born in a Tamil community. That made me to migrate to this country after 47 years of life over there uh, because of my only child and only daughter she told me that uh, some of my siblings had already migrated so she told me that uh, uh, they, you are blessed with only one child and ultimately uh, I'm going to be killed in this country so that was the situation so it's an emotional topic for me because that is intertwined with the politics of Sri Lanka, but I'm not a politician or I'm not a social activist or human rights activist. But even then, I have been asked to do this uh, topic. Uh, as far as the Tamil community in Sri Lanka is concerned, when we talk about social justice, that in turn goes to political issues. That has created a lot of social injustice to the Tamils. It does not mean that Sinhalese or Muslims in Sri Lanka do not have any social issues. They have their own issues. When you go into the current economic crisis, that affects all races. Ultimately, the Sinhalese politicians have to take the lion's share of, for the social injustice in Sri Lanka. Tamil politicians, too, are partly responsible uh, for the issues pertaining to the injustice prevailing in Sri Lanka. It is very unfortunate that Tamil politicians do not have the unity among themselves. It is impossible to mention the entire issues on social justice in Sri Lanka. Yesterday we listened to Dr. Veeramani uh, on caste system that is still existing even in Sri Lanka among the Sinhalese and the Tamils as well. But slowly it is diminishing. We could see the second, third generation uh, uh, children of all races they don't adhere to this kind of caste system. So that way we are fortunate, we can see a better world uh, and uh, I think things will disappear. And if I'm going to talk on the social issues in Sri Lanka, we can talk about the Mullivaikal incidents and forcible disappearance, white van abductions and political prisoners were murdered in prison. And a lot of innocent civilians and women and children were bombarded and killed. These are all issues that you would have heard. And you know what's going on in the entire globe, what's going on in Ukraine. So that is another issue. So we need a humanistic approach to lead a global peace. We have been talking about equality and social justice. Many of us are scared to talk even when you are going in a public transport in Colombo or in Sinhalese areas, talking in Tamil language itself is a risky thing. So that was a situation in which we lived. You may be arrested at any moment. That was a time that we had to uh, tolerate and be managed all these years. And uh, even the women, they were uh, bindi, the holy dot. Right. Traditionally, the women worn on the forehead of married Hindu women. In Canada-like countries, more than 200 languages are spoken in Canada, though English and French are the official languages. 
there are 60 indigenous languages as well in Canada. But in Sri Lanka, it's very unfortunate. There are only two languages, but we are unable to have an amicable life back home. So that's one of the reasons a lot of Tamils had migrated to various parts of the world. And I'm here to say my views and present my views as a humanist. Yeah, I'm a born humanist, but not to the extent of Periyar or uh, uh, Dr. Ambedkar or Dr. Biramani. But uh, I have the vision of, uh, you know, inculcating that uh, values of humanism. Uh, humanism has been defined in multiple ways by different people. I cannot go into all those definitions right now, and uh, you all know that. Uh, humanity is a natural impetus within human beings. As humans, we have to cultivate in a positive way to make our globe peaceful. As far as Sri Lanka is concerned, it is still pathetic to see the way humanity is inculcated. People have much pain and empathy towards several issues which are fundamentals to navigate their life. The state elected by the people is totally paralyzed. It has the whole responsibility to maintain equilibrium among, the, among its citizens to be true human beings. Basic rights are ignored. Education and religion have failed to ventilate proper channels to maintain equity. Societies are dismantled. There is no connective force among the members of the society. Contributions and findings of the intellectuals are not properly ventilated to the society and the social needs. Political, social, and economic aspirations have to be reviewed and revitalized based on the people and the humanity, based aspects of the people. So this particular title is very interesting, and uh, I can go on talking, but uh, because of the time limits, I have to cut short. And you know the Sri Lankan development over the last 60 to 70 years and the events such as ethnic riots and the civil war that the people of different races have to undergo indicates the complexity of humanism and social justice. So, and how much we have achieved as humans, that's our question. And you know the invasion or maybe the capturing of the country, Portuguese, Dutch, and British, they captured and ruled Sri Lanka for a total of 450 years and it ended in 1947. Soon after the World War II, Britain decided to give independence to India. Then Sri Lanka gained independence on the 4th of February, 1948. With the leadership of D.S. Senanayaka, a visionary who was able to unify all three communities, Sinhalese, Tamils, and Muslims. Within a few years, a rivalry began to emerge within the ruling party with the senior minister, S.W.R.D. Bandarnayaka, split the way and formed a new party, SLFP, with racial and anti-Tamil policies. So in 1956, he succeeded forming his government on the basis of singular-only slogan, eliminating English as official language. This measure put the Tamil community at disadvantage and created animosity between the two major races in the country. This led to many ethnic, uh, 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 for the last uh, yeah, th 30 years, the Tiger War for a separate Tamil Ulam state. The civil war was crushed down in 2009 by the Sri Lankan army with the support of many other nations, including India. Nearly 80,000 to 100,000 deaths, according to the UN estimate, and more than 1 million Tamils fled the country, immigrated to India, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, UK, USA, and other European countries as refugees. However, the majority Sinhalese government refused to make an apology for any further reconciliation among the races. The UN Geneva's request is turned down by the Sri Lankan government in regards to reconciliation and for the upliftment of human rights. We will have to wait and see what's going to be the outcome of 51st session of the Human Rights Council meeting, which started on the 12th September and going on till 7th October in Geneva. Humanism and social justice were deeply buried into the ground by electing a president who committed war crimes and the Sinhalese majority endorsed the genocide. His mismanagement and leadership pushed the country into a deep economic crisis in two years' time 
after he assumed office. Now they want bailout from International Monetary Fund. So the actions of the leaders in many countries, including Sri Lanka, that is the situation, you know, is despicable and deplorable, and no consideration of humanism or social justice. This is what we see in countries like Sri Lanka and elsewhere in the world. I would say there are certain impediments for social justice in Sri Lanka. Nationality issue. Even when you see a birth certificate, there is a column in which they ask, what is your nationality? Then we'll have to say Sri Lankan Tamil. That itself is a discrimination. We don't feel that as such, uh, we are Sri Lankans as a whole with the Sinhalese community. And also religion plays a crucial role and not to harmonize the situation, but for social injustice. You know, the, uh, more than 70% of the population practice Theravada Buddhism in Sri Lanka. Buddhism has been declared as the state religion under Article 9 of the Sri Lankan Constitution. They have more than 60,000 Buddhist monasteries in Sri Lanka with more than 500,000 Buddhist monks. Bhikkhus are ordained into three different Nikayas, Ramanya, Siam, and Amarapura Nikaya, Mahashanga, Sabha prelates, Askari and Malvata chapters are the deciding factors of constitution in the parliament. So that's uh, one of the crucial factors in Sri Lanka. The religion is considered uh, to play a key role in the administration. And militarization in the Northeast, fear psychosis, psychological trauma, killings and abductions, the creation of forcible settlement in the homeland of Tamils, erecting Buddhist statues in the Northeast. Still, there are a lot of things going on uh, uh, with the kind of, they say that we are doing some archaeological survey. That is the pretext, but it's not how far that's true, we don't know. Is again a problem for the Tamils. Land grabs issues in the name of high security zone and sexual violence, harassment and molestation of women and girls. Restriction in farming and fishing, disparity in the system of education, the physical resources and admission criteria to the universities. We had standardization issue started in 1971. And hunger, malnutrition, there is no proper shelter with basic amenities, especially the plantation workers. They have been suffering a lot. And there are legal issues tied up with social issues, illegal arrest and the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Truth and reconciliation has not met. Constitution itself has to be amended to incorporate issues pertaining to Tamils and Muslims, the minorities. Women-headed families or single mother families, that's a cultural issue. They have lost their husbands and because of our patriarchal society, uh, men are the ones who are the breadwinners of the home. And following independence, successive governments of Sri Lanka implemented ethnocratic language policy and planning to correct disparities in the British colonial era, which advantaged the Tamil minority over the Sinhalese majority. When you analyze the impact of two landmark language policy and planning initiatives, the Official Language Act number 33 of 1956 and Standardization Policy of 1971, on the social, economic, and cultural development of the Tamil minority. Language policy and planning was and continues to be co-opted by politicians and administrators for symbolic purposes, with the objective of elevating the Sinhalese ethnic major, ma ma majority and repress, repressing Tamil ethnic minority by implementing language policy and planning to position Sinhal as the language of administration and education, post-colonial governments of Sri Lanka transformed the language into a form of capital, reproducing social inequalities, which still impact the Tamil-speaking population today. Countries that have emerged from prolonged periods of war are faced with destroyed infrastructure, devastated lands, and declining industries in the aftermath. The government of Sri Lanka, a country ravaged by a three-decade-long war, has embarked on an extensive economic reconstruction agenda with the belief that development serves as a strong basis for trajectory, Sri Lanka faces high economic cost in failing to protect freedom of assembly, expression, 
and religion for all ethnicities. Most of us have achieved knowledge and skills through education. However, the attitude is the crux of the problem for social injustice. I would say that in Tirukural, uh, Thomas is uh, a uh, poet and uh, he has translated the book. I have read even his translation on that. Uh, in chapter 100, that is called Panbudamai Adiharam, uh, you can say universal or courteousness. Arambolum kurme renum, marambolver, makat pan billadavar. So that can be translated into, we can say the world will hail as simply dead wood when the person's lacking nobility, though their wits may be sharp as a razor's edge. But I think Thomas Hit Hitoshi Prokshima had translated as even as sharp as blade, without human kindness, men are blocks of wood. Sri Lanka needs better leaders with a great vision to enforce social justice among all the communities. Majority Sinhalese should not culture hatred towards Tamils and Muslims and vice versa too. The President, Prime Minister and other ministers should have the potential of a statesman rather than being a politician. The statesman worries about the future of the country and politicians worry about the next election. In this regard, Recently, I read about a leader of a nation, Jos Alberto Mujica Codano, the 40th president who served from 2010 to 2015 of Uruguay. He was tortured and imprisoned for 14 years during military dictatorship, and later he was elected as president in 2010. He has been described as the world's humblest head of state. He never wanted to be re-elected after one term in office. 90% of his salary was given to charity and uh, he turned down his pension. He's an activist, never wanted to be in the presidential palace but lived in his one bedroom farmhouse. Sri Lankan politicians put themselves first before their people and in fact a true leader is to serve the people and the country and not to be served. We can achieve peace and tranquility when the leaders and others in the governance could show civility, fairness and equality to the communities without any partiality and discrimination. It becomes the best foundation for the accomplishment of humanism and social justice in Sri Lanka. Before winding up, I must thank Professor Balasundram in the audience who asked me to deliver a presentation and Dr. Kandabiran, he's the one who asked me again, I said, I'm not the right person, I'm not a human rights activist, or I'm not an anthropologist. But even then he said, okay, since I lived in Sri Lanka for the last 47 years, and I continue to travel Sri Lanka, uh, mostly uh, on every year I'm there to see what's going on in that country. I have a close tie with that, so I'm in that way, as a humanist, I'm a proper person to uh, deliver this presentation. Thank you for the organizers, Dr. Soma Langovan, Dr. Kandabiran, and all other uh, distinguished delegates from other parts of the world, especially from Tamil Nadu, for giving me this opportunity to deliver this presentation. Thank you very much. Uh,